On this week's episode of VIP Access, I can't even lie, it's all about legends, it's all about GOATs. In case you don't know what GOATs is, I'm talking about the greatest of all time. The artist I'm about to interview is from Nigeria and I have to say that growing up, I looked up to him, I looked up to the type of entertainment that he brought to the table together with his brother. I know you're wondering who I'm talking about. Recently, he's brought us his like together and reality and now it's my reality that I'm talking to none other than Rude Boy. What's up, Rude Boy? Yeah, how you doing? You good? Ah! Good, not meh. You say good, you know, greatest of all. I mean the greatest of all time. I cannot even believe I'm standing here with you. How are you? Fine, how are you? I'm great. How old were you when you started listening to I don't know, but growing, my auntie used to live in Nigeria and they used to tell me stories of Nigeria and they used to bring me albums and uh, I wanted to be in the entertainment scene and work with artists and it's because of people like you, it's because of the music I had, it's because of the music videos I saw and was like, these are our very own international superstars right here from Africa. Tell me about that. It's been a long journey, man. You know, just a young boy singing in his mother's church and playing instruments, singing his mother's church, and one day he discovered that he's bored and always in the church singing the same old thing, and you know, just decided to move out from the church and just do something, and somehow get connected with brothers and came together, form a group, and doing it. And here I am today. Um, it's been a long journey, and today I'm, I'm doing my solo career, which is an amazing thing for me now, um, which is like another step for me in my life. And also, it's been wonderful. I, I, there's no country I've not been to, trust me. I've traveled all over the world and I've seen different people, different culture, different lifestyle. And it's been wonderful, it's been wonderful. When you look back at your journey and you think about where the African entertainment and music scene is at right now, what do you, what do you have to celebrate? What gives you pride about it? First of all, I celebrate myself. Because I created my own part to deliver African music. Um, uh, my, our major problem then was, uh, you see, people, 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 people were doing music. People were doing music, but it was, there were some things that were depriving us from being looked as international act. And this is one major part that we created, which is videos. You know, standard, creating this, that standard of video. Then in Africa, people do video, you just find three or four people, put them in the garden, you know, all those kind of things. Man, we need to change that. And that's what we did. So we decided to change the video. Whatever Americans can do, we can do it better. But still keep it African. And that's what we, exactly what we did. We changed the video mindset and the kind of music people listen to. We changed it too. You know, from, it was from our generation, you can tell, oh, there's an artist from Nigeria who's coming to Kenya regarded as international. But then it wasn't like that. You understand? Then it was more like, okay, if they're having a festival, they just bring one artist from South Africa. One just it's just a general board. From us, you could tell we started feeling stadiums. It was all about stadiums now. We're like, this little me, I'm, me personally, I took it personal because I'm like, this little thing I'm doing in this studio. It's what everybody's listening to and going crazy. That's what I saw and that's why I said there's serious power in music. There's power in music. You made African international and you made us see that we can be international right from home. Even when we became big and we have record labels trying to sign us up, we've, I've gone through some artist situation whereby an artist will be big and when he sign a contract next thing, is having an issue with record label, next thing is nobody. I was like, no. What, what example are we setting up? To tell an artist in, in Africa that he can make it big in his country, then he start praying for somebody to sign him outside the country. You should be the one signing people, because your people are enough for you. It's your first time on Coke Studio. You've been paired with the OG Calligraph, who um, is a dope rapper, recently won the best uh, rapper in Africa. Um, what can you say about the pairing? And did you know him before? First of all, and I've never met him. But one time, like a few months ago, I was at home. Um, it was half time watching soccer, and I changed the channel to a musical channel. That was uh, the, um, something Ziki, Tristan Ziki. Okay, okay. 
and I saw this video, this guy rapping with a lady, complaining about the industry in Kenya, talking about how some people are not supporting the Kenyan local artists. And I just removed my phone, I recorded it, I posted it on my Instagram, uh, straight. I said, this is what I call rap. Somebody, not, you're not scared. You're just saying your mind. Usually somebody is supposed to be scared about the media, you know, because I don't know how it works here, but some parts, so you have to be careful when you say things about media. So he wasn't scared and I saw the confidence in him and I posted that. And when I came here, they told me I'm paired with somebody. When I got to the airport, I said, okay, good. I didn't go further to ask. But when I came here, I just saw him. I was like, "Why well, you not know the person. He said, yeah, yeah, that is saw my person. I said, are you the guy that paired me? And he said, we are, ah, we are done. done it's deal. a done deal. We are done. We're done, you know? And that's it. In your career, what are the things you've learned the most? One. To be humble. In Nigeria, we use the word pompous. Feeling too big. Without the fans, you're nobody. If they don't listen to you, you're nobody. You end up singing in your room and the music remains there. Learn how to respect people. It doesn't matter. Two, put love first, not money. If you want to be an artist. You see, most people today, especially our own generation today, when they want to be musician, these are their fantasies. Girls, chicks, club, bikini, boat cruise, they're the lifestyle. Cars. Now, that is their drive. That's what they want. That's what they're going to the music industry. And if the, if the money doesn't come, you'll quit. Because you're doing, you're going there because this, you're going there for the money, the lifestyle and everything. But if you're doing it for the love, because you love it, you have something to prove. Yeah. You don't quit. That means you love it. Whether it's selling or it's not selling, you're, you, you're loving it and you keep working, you keep improving yourself. Yeah. So that's it. And the last one, which is being unique. Um, it's music, okay? Everybody can sing. But nobody sounds the same. Everybody can sing. Try as much as possible not to sound like somebody else. Because that person you are sounding like you can never beat that person. Try and be unique. But one thing about being unique is difficult for people to accept it. But the moment they accept it, that's when you now find yourself that you can even cough in the studio, everybody will love you. But being unique is very difficult. Sounding like somebody is easy. They will be doubting, hey, who is this? Is this person or that person? But being unique is difficult because people, it's going to take time for people to accept you. But when they start accepting you, you find that anything you're doing is working. Being at a production like Coke Studio or this kind of project, what is it like? Because from outside, people think Coke Studio is seeing you on TV and seeing you dance or perform a song. But actually, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And even on a day to day, you know it as an artist before you produce an album, a song. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes. So, um, how would you um, describe the experience at Coke Studio? Guys, trust me, Coke Studio is different from what you see on TV. You guys have been served with after after packaged, as, let me use that word, they finish packaging everything and they just show you guys. There's a lot going on in Coke Studio. Coke Studio is like a boot camp. Coke Studio is like an um, uh, institution. You know, Coke Studio is like a university. You have to wake up, there's time for this, there's time for this, and you know. So it's like a training, but it's like professionals. Now let's see how fast you are. That's what Coke Studio is like. And the worst part is that you just finish in my last one week, but you end up five days doing songs upon songs. Trust me, if you like, do five songs. You're going to perform those five song, songs in, uh, in a day. Now, imagine doing a fresh song like five songs. How do you then you perform those songs? Because it's fresh. How do you learn the lyrics fast? This is how you now know Cook Studio is not for every artist. Cook Studio is for studio gangsters. Studio gangsters, you must be a writer, producer, creativity, and um, engineer. Everything, you must be smart when it comes to music. You must be fast. That's Cook Studio. So forget what they show you. You don't know what we've gone through. Thank you so much, Shoot Boy. To me, it's such an honor to meet you. And to you, I wish you all the best with your career. I love all your songs. I love the melodies. It's always catchy. We always want to sing to it. And all the best with your career.